What's up, guys? So this is the first episode of the Champ is Here podcast that I have a guest on. Um, my guest today is Andreas Bond, um, and we talk about a lot of things from, you know, how long he's been wrestling, who's his inspirations. Um, we talk about the, the business side of wrestling after college. We talk about, uh, you know, his aspirations we, and, and his run to the national title last year. Um, and and honestly, a lot more. I, I just want to warn you guys, uh, we do cuss. Um, as you know, it's two guys, two young college age guys. So uh, if you're a parent and uh, you're you're listening, just know there are a lot of... Uh, a lot of words dropped there, so you could stop this now and don't listen, or you can keep listening and uh, gain a lot of value from this. Uh, I, I really gained a lot of value from talking to Andreas, um, and I hope you do too. Uh, if you guys have anybody in the NAI you want me to reach out to and talk to, let me know. They don't have to wrestle, um, but yeah, enjoy the episode. How you been, dude? I don't even know if we've oh, actually yeah. officially met when we're in nah, the NAI. No, nah, no, nah, nah. I've seen you. I mean, I've seen you like a, a few terms probably. And you talked to Jamil and stuff, so I was like, oh, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Jamil's a fucking shithead. So <laughs> it is a fucking idiot. Yeah, fucking if, 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 yeah, it's <laughs> he's a fucking. Wait, was, was Jamil there when you were there? Or no, no, he wasn't. But the whole time that he was there, I mean, the whole time I was there, this motherfucker talked shit to me on on Instagram. And so <laughs> Instagram, really? We, we were, and even today, yesterday, we talked shit to each other too. So he just says, he just always says he'd beat me in a match. He'd beat me in a match. And I'm like, bitch, you wouldn't be able to touch my fucking legs if we were in a match. You're small. So in, in my defense, and and this is just defense, heavyweight is the worst weight class. Hands down, easily the worst weight class in the NAI. But, but yeah. you motherfuckers are small. So <laughs> that's, yeah. how, that's how I well, told you. I don't you know, dude, Demille got pretty fat, bro. He was like 230, bro, when he I was there. Fat. He does look like a little bowling ball. He's and strong then, as shit. I heard. Oh, well, I never really wrestled him, but I heard he's yeah. strong as shit. Yeah, I he he refuses to wrestle with me. So look, we we did a camp together at Lindsey Wilson this past summer, and he didn't he didn't wrestle. Oh, with really? Me. Yeah, he said he could beat <laughs> he didn't me. Wrestle. And I was like, well, we can wrestle right now, Jamil. Like during the break at the camp, and he didn't do it. He made up Damn. some fucking excuse. <laughs> he. We all know what would have happened. We would have shook hands. I would have ankle picked yeah. them, and then I would have pinned them. <laughs> That's exactly exactly what would have happened. Yeah, I believe it. You yeah, know, we always make fun of Jamel. Everyone wanted to wrestle him. Yeah, who do you wrestle with? Like, who's your main partner? Uh, right now, uh, right now, it's probably I'll switch between a, a few people. Probably like, uh, maybe I'll go with like our starter forty one Kale, or I'll go with uh. A bigger guy like, like Trace, Fifty Seven, or Dom, or, or sometimes I go with, uh, or I'll go with Sal sometimes, or Max. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about with Sal. Sal Silva, I guess that's his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sal, that's yeah. He's he's he he dropped down to forty nine too. So we're kind of both same weight class. So I Shit. think we kind of like, we kind of like don't really like, we don't go too much. The problem, I mean. It's just, I guess, because we might verse later. I don't know. It's just kind of like, it's a little it's different. Weird. Like when you're at, the, yeah, it's a little weird at the same weight class. I Why? mean, we're super cool. We're super cool with each other, but like, it's definitely like a little like, it's just weird. I guess. Why, why did he drop? Like, what was what what was the reason for dropping weight? I have no. Uh, I don't know. That was just the decision he made, and I, I don't. I mean, Man. I don't think it's anything else than that. Besides. I would have been like, that's bullshit. Whatever. That's, <laughs> that's what I would said. But it's the NAI. I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't care. Like, I've always, I'm pretty chill. I'm laid back. I don't really care about that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. I yeah. The, yeah. My freshman year, well, I'm, I'm used to my freshman year. We had another kid named Jalen Soda, and he, like, was just as good as me. But, like, he, he, he even got farther than me. He got in the blood round, and I was, like, the round for that. But we never versed each other at really? conference or national. So it was, like – I mean, it's a little different having someone at your weight class, but, I mean, it helps, like, push you. Like, I like – I mean – It does. I think Hawkins is always good, and I always, like – that's my teammate, so I'm not really, like – Yeah, for sure. I'm not really – I mean, it's to the back of your head, but it's not really, like – I don't really – I'm not, like – at the end of the day, I'm just trying to get better. It's not really about who's yeah. up a little bit. I think. Yeah, dude. No, 100%. I, I'm the same. Like, the biggest thing, like, uh, 
I was actually on two other like really big podcasts. It's this one called the Jiu-Jitsu podcast, which is like the biggest one in um like jujitsu. And yeah, uh, yeah. it's like I said the same thing is like if you're like more than the sport, like if you like know how to detach yourself, you kind of are really separate from like the results. So like maybe yeah, you'll, exactly. yeah. Maybe you'll win some shit, maybe you won't. Like who cares? Maybe you'll start, maybe you won't. It's like, nah, who like I'm gonna do my yeah. best, but like who Yeah, exactly. That I mean that's how I've been since I've been in college type I thing. Know. I've always been like the results aren't too much. I mean, of course we actually do care about results, but right, we want to, we want to win, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. if we but don't at the end of the day, it's not like our identity. Like I'm not like if I don't win this, then it's not the end of the world. You know, like I'm still no one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And it's like on on that topic, dude. You are a national champ now too, which is like crazy. Yeah, it's, it's totally different. And like I know, like I obviously you know, like I know the feeling of like you win and then you have to come back and do that shit, bro. It's stressful. Yeah, it's it, it's it, sometimes, especially yeah, the beginning of the year for me, it was like really hard, like being returning last. Especially when last year and the year before that, I was like, I was unseated. So like, I, I've never been ranked. Last year, I will. I was only the highest I got ranked was like 18th or something. Oh wow, so like, that's crazy. So like, I never really like. I was like, I'm used to being the underdog. Now it's like I'm I'm supposed to win type thing. So it's yeah. at first beginning of the year, it was like really hard for me to like transition to that. Like that was probably one of the hardest things I had to deal with. Yeah, it it happens, dude. Like, I mean, it's crazy because I remember last year Trent was ranked number one, my teammate, and then he didn't. Yeah, even, he didn't even freaking he place, dude. Two. Yeah, dude. Or no, Jesus. he won one and two. He won yeah, one, one, and two. one and two. I think he won one, lost to Jack Latimer, who's now at Grandview, and then lost uh, the Cumberland <laughs> University kid. Or yeah, just, I was like, what the fuck, dude? It it's crazy. Like the national tournament is super crazy, especially that your guys' weight class. Like, I think, like I said, yeah. like. The heavier it gets in lots of the weight classes, especially in the NAI, it's just not super deep. So it's like you can yeah, kind of so predict like it a little top, bit more. Yeah, the top dogs are placing higher pretty much. Yeah, normally. yeah, yeah easily. But like forty, yeah, forty nine is definitely like really wild. Like the mid tier weight classes, you never really know. Like, yeah, you have no fucking idea. Like when when March comes, you have no fucking idea. Especially like, I mean, even for me, like we talked about like the returning national champ thing. I literally lost my very first match back the next season i i literally lost the first so really? yeah so i wrestled a d2 all-american and it was really close he, he had placed third at the tournament for uh ashland blazer or not ashland ashland blazer is that their name or ashland one of those teams um yeah and uh he beat me six to five the very first match back and i was just like what the fuck like i suck like that's literally how i felt yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I fucking it's hard to like lose yeah. you know yeah it is and your coach is this like my coach was a little – I think he was pretty disappointed in me. And my teammates are like, oh, well, I guess he's really not that good. Like, what? what yeah, exactly. Just, yeah. And you're just like, man, fuck you guys. Like, this – this. Yeah, it's just one loss. I mean, like, for me, I've already had, like – I think I have, like, seven losses already. Hey, dude, how – what do you so, – like? What do you think's made you lose coming back? And I mean, it, being undefeated doesn't mean shit, by the way. But, like – Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I think coming back, like, I was just, like, I don't, nothing with my training was wrong. Like, I was training hard. I was doing all the right things. I mean, also, like, my weight, especially at the beginning of the year, it's kind of hard for me to, like, come back from being summer and, like, making weight and stuff. So, that was a little d- difficult. But then just, like, the pre- – like, at first, it was basically just my, like, the pressure of it. Like, it was hard for me, especially with, like, I had new coaches coming in, too. So, like – yeah that was the other thing I like i gotta trust these co- i'm like i'm not like maybe i wasn't fully bought in you know and mm-hmm. now now the pressure like i was undefeated till life open and i lost my very first round as once at least an unranked kid i did not even know it's an unranked kid from reinhardt i lost i lost two by one and then on the back side i lost to a d2 kid but i basically i just didn't wrestle good because it was like a lot of pressure and i just wasn't opening up like for me, like, I'm pretty, like, wild. Like, I can wrestle, yeah. like, I can be anyone or I can lose to, like, anyone. some random person. But that's yeah. just – on that's on my, like, offense. Like, if I don't open up, like – because my defense is already really good. 
Yeah, yeah. But if I, but if I don't open up on my offense, then I can lose to anyone. But, like, when I open up my offense, I really believe I can, like, beat anyone. So it was holding me back, like, coming back, like, my friend. Like, I just felt – I just, like, it was just, like, a lot of pressure on me. I was still – I haven't lost yet. Yeah, dude. So I lost the o- life open. And then I want to say – Reno, and then we went to Reno, which is actually a really tough tournament. But the Reno's week tough of Reno, shit. The week of Reno, I got a throat infection, and like my coach wanted to take me, but I was like, "Fuck it, like I'm gonna just go anyways because I'm dumped in." I go mm-hmm. 0 and 2 at Reno again. Like I go 0 and 2 at Reno, which I mean the kids were actually pretty good, but like the kids, I I, I don't think I should should have lost to those kids, but that was more just like I, I just couldn't breathe. Like I have a bad yeah. throat infection, and then. Kind of like from there, like that, coming to Nationals, I was like training harder. I was training hard, but like I think the spot, it was like I was starting to like I'm losing a lot. And it was like just the spiraling of like new coaches. I'm like, am I, I had people in my ear. Like I had a lot of people in my ear because I'm in my hometown. Like I have a lot of people in my ear. Like, oh, why aren't you doing good? Oh, you know, it's this, it's that, you know, like, and it was just making me like, I was training harder, but I was like, my head was not there at all. Like, yeah. So now I go, I go to national duels and then I lose two more times at national duels to like kids I shouldn't lose to. And like that point, it's like everything's out the window. Like, I'm just not in the right head. Like, I'm really bad. I think, I think I'm in a pretty bad mental state. And then like two weeks, two weeks later, we just had Missouri Valley invite, which is like the hardest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hardest, pretty much, like, mini any eyes. So, like, yeah, that one was, like, okay, I got to, like, actually – I put everything besides the back. They even, like – they ranked me, like, 20th coming yeah, to, fuck. to uh, uh, this, this tournament, which – because this tournament was just last week. But they they were, like, ranked me 20th. And at that point, I was just, like I, – I knew I trained really hard. And I was just, like, okay, like, I have nothing – like, obviously, they don't think I'm good, like, they, they're going to rank me 20. It's like, I don't think people expect me now to do any good at this tournament. Cause yeah. there's like, a, there's probably like seven, eight kids ranked ahead of me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, when I, and I got Missouri Valley, I just threw everything high besides me. And I was just like, okay, I'm just wrestle like high wrestle. And then I, I went on a roll. Like I beat the number four kid in the quarters. And then in the finals, I lost to like a really tough kid from life. Bombacita but who just transferred in from like Oklahoma state and he's from Florida too. But it was like that, that match was like a close match. And like, I know I can win that one. Cause it was double overtime. Yeah. I lost. So yeah. at least now I got more confidence now. I think I, I think, and just like mentality wise, I just like, I, I think I just had the wrong mentality all year and it just like was catching up to me. So now I'm like turning things around. I know, I know what I gotta do, type thing. I mean, we already already won, so of course. I just gotta. I know, I know. Like the seasons, like I learned this my first season. Like it's not about like my freshman year. I started out real strong, coming mm-hmm. mid year, and I kind of just went like this. I kind of like went down a little bit, mm-hmm. but last year I kind of just stayed down. But at the end, I just came up. I and like a lot of wrestlers, I noticed that all American and like win. Mm-hmm. Are the kids that are coming are peaking at the right time are doing good towards the end of the year, not just doing really good at the beginning. Because that'd be, yeah. at, the, at, at the end of the day, like, at, if you're doing good at the beginning, like, who cares? Like, no one really remembers. No one remembers that. You know? No, no one gives a fuck. Like, yeah. you, you might lose some matches going into, the, like, the national tournament, like, going to before, but, like, no one fucking cares. Like, both yeah. my national title, my first two, I had two losses both those years. Which, like I said, heavyweight's not as hard, so, like, it's going to be harder for me to lose. But, like, the two yeah. losses I had were to Division One kids and a, that D2 kid. And, like, yeah. bro, no one gives a fuck about my losses. Like, when, yeah, when no. they look into it, like, no one fucking – they're like, oh, shit, he's a national champ still. And it's yeah, like, exactly. Like, that's good enough. Like, no, no one really cares. And, like, my mindset, too, like, when I – it's, like, I, I, for me, it was just like, yeah, I'm not changing anything. Like, I know exactly what I did last year. I'm going to do that same exact shit this year. And because uh, I had the same shit. I had people in my ear, like when I lost that, to that D2 kid. And then yeah. I, lost to, I lost to Zach Elam um, my junior year, um, who's a really good Division One kid. Yeah. And I lost him really, really close, like 
12 to 11 at the Linwood Open Finals. Be like, man, like, what are you doing wrong? Like, what's wrong? What's different? Yeah. I'm like, man, nothing. Like, I just don't care. Like, I'm just, I'm doing whatever. Like, I let it, I mean, yeah. I let it fly as much as I can. My style is a little bit strict, I guess. But, uh, yeah, dude, it's like the biggest thing, like, that I could really connect with because we're both, like, we've both been, like, the returning national champions. Like, people are going to be in your ear, and they're going to put a little bit of pressure on you. But, uh, dude, you just, for me, it's just, like, tell myself, like, man, like, fuck this shit. Like, I'm so much more than this. Like, whatever these people are saying, I'm like, fuck them. Like, in one ear, yeah. out the other. Like, this is this is my you know, this is my, my game. This is fun. Like, I'm just here to have fun. Like, and, and then yeah. like big picture thing, like, dude, this is the NAI. Like who cares? Like, yeah, exactly. Like who, like no one really cares. Like if, if you win, if I win, like no, no one really cares. So it's like, yeah, these people who have an opinion, they're, they're bored. They're sitting on their couch or they're practice yeah, partners. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like they have nothing better to do than to, you know, talk shit about NAI wrestlers or, yeah. Like it's it's just like man, like whatever. It, and also another great thing is you're already a national champ. No one's ever gonna be able to take that away from you. Yeah, like, exactly. You're, exactly. You're forever gonna be a national champ. You can go 0-2 this yeah. year. Who cares? You know, but yeah. So those are just really good things that like I thought about because the mental side of it was huge for me too. And that's why I think like those last three years, I was just like I didn't lose to anyone in the NAI those last three years because yeah. I was just like, I'm just gonna and like most kids, I feel like most kids in the NAI don't have that like mentality. You know, like no, they take it too seriously. It's a it's yeah, a fucking no, they take it too seriously. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a sport. I don't really see it as anything else. Yeah, dude. It's, at the end of the day, it's a joke. Like no one cares. Yeah. You know, like yeah. And so it's like I want to love it. Like I, my goal is just just love it, dude. Like I'm like man, I get to wrestle today. I get to go do this shit today. I get to have fun. Yeah. I get to work really hard, and hopefully, I can win. Some shit, maybe not. Who cares? But you know, I, yeah. I just get to love it because you're gonna graduate college and you're gonna get a job most likely, whether it's a wrestling coach or not. And then ten years from now, no one's gonna give a fuck that you won an AI national title. Yeah, you no, know. No. So yeah. it's like you have to. One of the things I do, like my full time job now, is I market myself. I have a wrestling club and I do wrestling privates, literally yeah, yeah, just yeah. basically all day. And you being a national, like being a national champ, is not enough. You you have to learn how to market yourself. You yeah, exactly. Learn how to get, um, you know, get people to come in, and you have yeah. to learn how to keep people. And it's like, you, yeah, like winning a national title is just like the start. It's like, okay, now people are gonna look at you, but it's like, how yeah. do you keep people after you've done that? You know, and it's the same at, as repeating. You know, you won a national title, now you're a national champ, but how are you gonna do it again? You know, yeah. And it's like it's like those people in high school that live on to the past. It's like, yeah. You can't do that you know you gotta like move forward your life like 100%. like think forward like yeah i mean yeah no i i know this is gonna end one day like i know you know i might graduate next year so well like i gotta just let it like as long as i know like i practice yeah i gave it my all like i don't i don't really care about results i never like i stopped caring about this stuff a long time ago like yeah exactly results, results are for uh the fans to me exactly resolve yeah. for the fans it, it's like a martial yeah. art like i do jujitsu like it's my I, yeah, it's also yeah. what i do full time it's a fucking mar- like dude no one yeah, like yeah. there's so many people in my jujitsu gym who literally never compete like they refuse to compete but yeah they're, they're really good and they just go in every day and get better for just yeah. because they want to and it's like honestly i feel like wrestling should be allowed to have like we should be allowed to have that mentality and if we do compete maybe we win maybe we don't but uh yeah I think that's what lacks with wrestling a little bit is uh, yeah, just right. like we have that to is, have results. Yeah, um, that no, that is true. That's a lot different. Actually, my dad did jiu-jitsu too. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I've done jiu-jitsu since I was like – my dad's been doing a long time, but I started jiu-jitsu when I was like around the same age as wrestling. I was like started when I was eight. Oh, crap. So I've been in jiu-jitsu just as long, but I just – for high school wrestling, I was like, oh, I can get a scholarship. So I kind of stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm definitely going to like go back to jiu-jitsu. My, my dad actually just got his black belt like – two weeks ago oh shit that's super dope bro yeah. and you know what's crazy freaking uh so i, I used to when well, my dad used to train there i used to train the two gracie fishhawk the mm-hmm. guy who started it he he's from kentucky but he moved back oh, um he, uh gracie orange bro you know josh hayden yeah 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 Yeah, no that was like my main instructor from when i was like in middle school and when Dang. i was younger too that's dope dude but that was kind of crazy yeah so he's in orange but right now but i'll probably def- i'm gonna definitely get back in jiu-jitsu like once i get done wrestling 
just like switch, like probably like you like i'm yeah like, right, i'm over wrestling like i want to do something yeah yeah dude. Up, you know? yeah dude i i literally get so so and i mean i don't know if these people are listening but arizona state reached out to me north carolina state uh really? unc M- mizzou reached out to me um what was the other school campbell and the university of illinois all these different schools have rtcs and they all keep trying to throw money at me to come be a training partner because there's not many yeah. big there's not many good big guy training partners and i'm like yeah. fuck that i am done wrestling like yeah i'm done like with that shit bro. it yeah, sucks that's... And it's like, to be a, <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. Like, why would you want to yeah. do that to yourself? And I don't care how much yeah. money they could give me. They can offer me $10,000 a month. And I'd still be like, no, dude, I am done. Like wrestling is, I love teaching. I love rolling around yeah. with my friends and stuff, but like rest, man, it, it fucking sucks. And people who've never wrestled, yeah. you know, you, you don't understand. Like, especially in college, you're like, God, this is horrible. Like, this is the worst yeah, thing no. in the world. It's fun, no, yeah. but it's it's horrible at the same no, time. I'm, I'm I'm ready for like the college grind to be over. I'm freaking like, I feel like my body's like super old now f- yeah, from it. I know. Did you ever get any major injuries since you've been here? I mean, been in a southeastern. Uh, not gonna win. No, I've never even been like, I, I haven't had any injuries my whole wrestling career, basically. Damn, dude, that's crazy. I tore my LCL actually my junior, sorry, sophomore year, or yeah, so, no, junior year, junior year when I wrestled uh Tanner Farmer, whichever year that was. I think it was my junior. Oh, year. really? Yeah, you had a knee brace on. For, wait, hold on. Let me get, let me get a charger real fast. All right. Yeah, no, I remember you. I think I I watched the interview after when you were like talking about how you were going through some adversity with your knee and stuff. Yeah. For that match and everything. Yeah, dude, it was, was it was fun. That though, that was like probably my like that was probably my most like probably my favorite like finals match I ever watched in person, like especially oh, for like yeah. NAI. Yeah, yeah, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. That match was super crazy, and yeah, because yeah. you I, you were talking about it after how like every a lot of people were down at you. Yeah, like, man. This big, this thirty year old freaking football yeah. player came in, like yeah. M- big motherfucker, big old motherfucker. Oh, yeah, that was a big motherfucker. And they were like, they were, well, he was like a, he was legit in high school, like Fargo champ. And yeah, Fargo champ. Oh, um, yeah. he was a practice partner at Nebraska for um. Really? They they, they had an all American at heavyweight. That was his main practice. So he, his scholarship was a dual scholarship. So he got paid to uh, also be on the wrestling team technically, but he didn't compete. He just practiced. So. Yeah. He had a couple of years of like in the practice room at Nebraska, which is really good too. So it's like, man, yeah. he didn't, he was, he wasn't like just coming off the streets wrestling. And no, yeah, he was he, not no slouch. He was fucking, he just, he was like, for, yeah. He looked, like, he looked like a coach when I've seen him at yeah. the tournament. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, what man. I thought. I thought he was a fucking coach. And then I had to wrestle him and I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> that's what I say about heavyweight. I will say, like I said, it's the weakest weight class I'd definitely say in the NAI. But God damn it, the, the size discrepancy is so crazy. Like, yeah, I, no. I have to fucking wrestle a guy who's, I think he was like, at the time, like 50 pounds bigger than me, like, which is yeah, crazy. Exactly. So it's like, ah, it sucks. And I believe, like, if we were the same size, the match would have been a little bit different. I probably would have smashed, like, destroyed yeah, him. Exactly. But no, man, when, when you're that much bigger, dude, pff, that's a, it's a skill in itself to learn how to wrestle big, big dudes. Big oh, guys. Yeah. I have questions now. I have wrote down some questions I have oh, to yeah, ask yeah. you. But it's good because I this was natural talk. But, uh, so the first one that I was thinking is, like, why did you go to – why did you decide to go to the NAI since, like, what I'm trying to do okay, is, like, yeah, bring yeah. light to the NAI? So, I mean, in high school, I was just an all right. I think I was, like – I was a good state wrestler. I wasn't – I didn't do anything nationally. I was kind of just, like – I played four times and I got – I got um, my junior, senior year, I, I made the state finals. Hmm. And I actually, in high school, I never even won a state title. Me neither. So from, Same. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm from Florida. So, like, I, I moved to my senior year, I moved to Lake, Lakeland. Hmm. So this is actually the town that my SU is at. So, like, they were, so they were recruiting me my, before my, like, during my senior year. And I only had, I said I wasn't good nationally. I only had two schools look at me. I had Lander and SU. So, so kind of Lander, I went on a visit, and they were just trying to charge me a lot of money to go there. And then SU, they were like, yeah, you wouldn't really have to pay anything because I was just living at home. I Because I'm only – I live 15 minutes from school. So, I was like – for me, it was like no-brainer. Just go to SU and just stay at home and uh, just – 
go to college there and get on the wrestling team. I don't really have to pay anything, any scholarship or tuition. So it was no brainer for me. Uh, same, actually, like basically the same. Yeah. Story. Like I'm from Kentucky. Yeah. And Lindsey Wilson was in Kentucky and they offered me a lot of money. And I was like, sure. that's good yeah, enough yeah. for me. Fuck Division One. Like, uh, yeah. And the other thing was like my grades were not great in high school. So like if Division One, I, I feel like you got to have if you unless you're just really freaking good, like you just need really good grades to get in. And it was like for me. Yeah, yeah that's not I didn't get a like, guy. I, I don't like school that much. So. I hate I'm school. Uh, yeah, no. what, yeah, do you, what do you study? Like, what's your uh, major in? Uh, so I'm actually just a business major. Okay. Like, pretty typical. Yeah, typical. Pretty, uh, stereo, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Athlete, uh, yeah. business or communication major. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's okay. It doesn't matter. It's like most likely, I mean, I don't know if you'll use your degree or not. I mean, I'm, you, I'm yeah. sure you will. I, I got my degrees in counseling. So, okay. yeah, but I, I don't ever but use my degree. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. Like, I'm a wrestling I feel like coach. It's, just gate- it's just a gateway to things. And it's just to have a degree. Like, I'm probably like, so my mom owns a restaurant, a sushi restaurant in Tampa. So I'm probably just going to like take over that. And like, I'm going to take over that. And eventually I want to open my own gym. Like, school. yeah. Just so. slowly investing money into it. Yeah. Sure you have a, yeah. One of the things, crazy things I learned about like having a business now and stuff is uh, this thing called an EF, like an emergency fund. So basically, yeah. Any money I make, um, I take a, basically 20% out of any money I make and I put it in an EF, an emergency fund. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm just saving that. So like eventually like five or 10 years down the road, I'll have my own jump too. Like, cause that's, that's like a super yeah. big goal is to have your own jump. Cause that's just dope. Like you're, yeah, you're your man. own goal. Like, yeah. Own space. Like that, yeah. that's, yeah, that, that is for me, like, that'd be my dream. That's definitely like my dream, like job. Hell yeah, that's cool. I'll 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 have to come run a camp at your school. You can come yeah, to mine yeah, too yeah. and run a camp. It'll and be good. <laughs> yeah, it'll be super cool. Okay, so next one, just I'm not gonna ask all of these because it's a lot, but because you've already answered a ton of them. Um, like for wrestling and in wrestling and like outside of wrestling, just for like anyone who wants to listen, all of my kids who do privates with me listen. So it'd be at least like 30 people who've listened to this. Like, who was yeah. like your like your biggest inspiration? inside of wrestling and then your biggest inspiration outside of wrestling like so it doesn't have to be wrestling related and then the one that is okay Mm -hmm. man this is hard i know it's tough i guess like like would you say wrestling would you be like just watching or just like actual person like um let's say an actual person like for me i would say like i i really liked uh like kyle snyder like his his story and his career and it just motivated me uh man i do like uh i like watching like international wrestling so i do okay. like that the, the kid that won the dude that won 65 at japan i can't oh remember. otoguro yeah yeah i really like watching him wrestle because that like i think that's the style i like to like He's, that would be like if i had like replay style i'd be like his style like he he is my favorite yeah he is my favorite wrestler right now yeah, Actually, no, I love yeah. that. I love watching him. Like, yeah. he's so he's the bad. shit. I mean, I mean, I guess like NCAA. I really like. I like Penn State. So like a lot of the Penn State guys, I just like their style. Like Brooks, I really like. I like yeah. how I like offensive wrestlers. So like Brooks or like, uh, man, I'm trying to think. Yeah, someone like that. It's so anyone Penn State. I really like that offensive, like fun style. Like, yeah, let it loose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, and then I guess outside of wrestling, uh, man, that's hard. Anyone who's just motivated you, like for me, Jocko, Jocko Willing. I don't know if you know this. Yeah. But, okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I do like I like watching those. Uh, uh, David Goggins, I really like. Yeah, David Goggins is a great one. When I, I when I would go on the treadmill, I just put on like one of his. Yeah. Videos. <laughs> I actually really like. Uh. uh I'm like weird. Like some reason I have this. Like I like bodybuilding for some reason. Like I like yeah. watching a lot of stuff on bodybuilding. Like it's weird. It's not I weird, dude. Like, it's it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. like I like I like I like just the nutritional side and just like the mentality wise. So like I like like some of the old school guys. You know, like going yeah, it's like you know yep. like we're, like we're just stick to the plan. Like mm. you know, just dis- like discipline. Like if you're a bodybuilder, it's discipline. All like all one hundred percent. And I think it's- I think that's dope like just being being able to be that disciplined like i really like that 
I agree. I I was really, really big into uh, bodybuilding. There was actually an Arnold Schwarzenegger speech. I can't remember what it is. It yeah, was, I think was, I've seen that one. Yeah, 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 and I would like listen to it almost every time when I would lift because I'd have this motivational speech workout playlist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I listened to a ton of bodybuilding guys. And yeah, yeah, bodybuilding, Jocko, David Goggins, Jordan Peterson, yeah. Joe Rogan, like those, like those type of guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, like so. I think most guys are kind of the same. But I feel like we all like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of like, course. You know, like the more hard, like hardcore, like yeah. dudes like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever ran a marathon? This is a no, dude. No. You get, you think you're ever gonna run one? No, <laughs> dude. You got to do it. I no, I'm a heavyweight. I, I did it. I hate running. I don't like running. Me too. That's why you got. Did you just hear that? David Goggins just said you're a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dude, like, bro, I'm not running, bro. Like, I cannot. I, I hate running so much. I, I know I'm 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 with you actually I hate it that's why I don't I don't really do it very much anymore but like when I ran the marathon it was because uh, Derek Smallwood who's on Lindsay Wilson's team right now yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. we had talked like hey if you win nationals you should run a marathon and I won nationals and then me and him just ran a marathon together just we, really yeah we prepped for a couple of weeks and then we went outside we uh drew out our route and then we ran the marathon and it sucked it took me like it took like five hours of running so wait, close. how long were you, how long you, how many miles you run? 20 26.2. Oh dude. Yeah, no. Yeah, bro, it was horrible. Uh, I Derek, just like running yeah. to me is like I'm so like I feel like running doesn't even help. No, it doesn't. No, I don't think running helps the wrestling or jiu jitsu. No, it doesn't. Much. It, it yeah, doesn't. Yeah, so I'm like practical. I'm like, dude, if I don't have to run, then it's I mean, I guess the mental side, I mean yeah, you want to be like tough stuff out no i'm i'm with you man i don't think you necessarily have to like really run uh i think sprints and stuff can be helpful sometimes yeah but, uh, i think sprints are more helpful yeah but long distance running no i think the best conditioning for wrestling like is literally more wrestling like more drilling yeah like just no yeah more. definitely like more wrestling or even like the best one besides wrestling for me is like i'll go on the bike like yeah the bike the bike, bike was huge for me uh Those yeah one bike air down bikes just yeah, we would do like uh like bike matches. Yeah. Like sprints. So like those those help me because I mean it is like full body. So like Yeah. I did that once a week actually. Every single week I did uh air down bike in at like six AM. I would do so it'd really? be at ten minutes. It'd be ten yeah. minutes with my uh, roommate Jonathan and it'd basically be like you go ten minutes on really, really hard. Or sorry, you yeah. go twenty seconds hard, ten seconds yeah. light. Twenty seconds hard, ten seconds light. You do that no, for ten those minutes. Will get you, those will get you I, I was doing, we doing a bunch of those for last year and they I had no problems with gas tank or nothing like that. No, dude, same. It's it's crazy. But yeah. it, again, it's sad because like even sometimes like the, the guys might be in the best shape and you still lose because some motherfuckers are just so good at wrestling. Like, yeah, no, that's the thing. I mean, I, I look I like looking at like like a lot of Russians. Yeah, not, dude. They're not working like Americans, but they're they're just technically way better. Yeah, they're just kicking our ass. It's yeah. it's super crazy. You so you have you ever tried like any of like the world team trials like UWW stuff? Um, I uh, have. I haven't yet. I mean, I might. I it's just might, fun. Maybe, maybe it's try. It's fun. I just. I. I also like. I'm. I'm not gonna say I suck at freestyle. But I'm definitely not as good at freestyle. I'm. I'm horrible at freestyle, man. And Greco. Really? And I placed at Fargo in both, but I'm still horrible in it. It's like my neutral was <laughs> yeah, good enough. Man. But the v, I mean, t- just like I'm more like control wrestler. Like I, like I, I hate. I don't know freestyle to me. Like I hate getting out leg and I just get like rolled over. Like that's so annoying. It's just annoying. Yeah, dude. It's I'm hard to I learn. spent like enough time. Like I, I could get good at it, but naturally, I'm not like the best at it. Like no, dude. Sure. Same, same. And yeah, who fucking cares? I think folk style is better than freestyle. People will hate me for saying that, but. It's, yeah, it's more enjoyable for me, and it's a little bit more complex. Like I don't, I, I don't like the fact that someone can just fucking gut wrench me and break my ribs and then turn. Yeah, me. it's exactly. like yeah. that's it's technical. I get it, but at the same time, it's just like man, I don't know. I don't like it. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna hit you with another question. What is All your right. favorite thing to do outside of wrestling? Like if you're not wrestling, what it what is it? It can be anything. Uh, man, that is so hard uh it can be you can name multiple things really like what do you like to do when you're not wrestling i like uh watching youtube (laughs) yeah me too (laughs) i like watching youtube i mean i like 
dude. I, I'm like we. I don't really. I don't really do much. Like I. I mean. I'll, oh, I mean, I like hanging out with my friends and stuff. Like, yep, huge. That's kind of like that social aspect. I like hanging out with my friends. Like, you know, we'll we'll hang out. Yeah. Like, besides that, though, like I'm kind of like boring. No, I'm dude, like, I'm, I'm the same. You know, honestly, like I'm pretty like boring. I'm not gonna lie. Like I just I just watch YouTube and like chill at home or uh, Netflix with my friends or something. They all like we'll go out or like yeah. chill and dude, yeah. Out, like, I I'm I'm literally the same yeah. as you. I I yeah. I train. I watch YouTube. You know, yeah. I hang out with my friends. You know, and yeah. I fucking I do this. Like I I yeah, exactly. work I yeah. work online. Like almost of my work is online. And so besides that, like I don't do shit. Like I it's yeah, not no, really I don't really have no hobby. Like I'm not really like a hobby person. I just like I like doing what I enjoy doing, and like I'm perfectly fine with like that. Like. That yeah, the chill, the chill life. Take that, take that into your adulting life too after college, because dude, yeah. the number one thing I learned, like now living on my, well, I have a roommate, but like, like having my own place, like, fucking bills, dude, bills suck. Like, yeah, they, they no, come yeah. fast. They come super fast. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm. That's the adult life. I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be ready for because college is like the college is so easy. Like, I dude, just, it's the <laughs> easiest thing in the world. You, yeah, you're like, bro, it's so easy. I just get a class, like, have yeah. like two hours a day, and I just gotta, I get to chill. I, you know, I go to practice, go home. Yeah, you know, exactly. Work, do some homework, and that's it. I go yeah, to bed. it's like I would much <laughs> rather. I was complaining about doing math homework, like algebra one was a, a thing that I had in college. Yeah, and I would complain about doing that crap, and it would take me maybe three or four hours to do. And that would be like it for the week with like hard homework. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh my God, every single day, especially like if you're like an entrepreneur, like I am, you have yeah. to, you have to find your money. Like I, re- yeah. I refuse to work a nine to five, you know? So it's like, you're yeah, always no. consistently, it's not a worry, but you, you're always consistently like, how can I make progress? Like, how can I yeah, yeah, yeah. build like, onto what I'm doing? And yeah. cause if you don't and you, you're stagnant, you're not going to have no. your yeah. money. You're not going to have enough money gonna go broke like you're gonna go broke you're gonna be sad and that's the be- thing about yeah that's the thing about entrepreneurship you don't have like a i mean that is the nice thing about having a nine to five is just you have that consistent it is that but, consistent pay you know like it is but the thing i heard in a, a, a podcast recently um that my girlfriend actually works for uh is like there's like only one thing like more addicting than like crack and that's like a, a nine to five job like a salary uh, really? like that like the comfort of a of a nine to yeah. five and that's what fucks people, you know, like yeah, they, yeah, they go out and get this job and they're like, this is it. Like, this is my maximum. Yeah. Like this I've hit the ceiling and, and you're not yeah. really, lots of people just aren't passionate about their jobs. Whereas, you know, I, I'm lucky, like I'm doing really well right now with my business, but it's like five years from now, I think my business is going to be way bigger than what it is now. Yeah. It's like, I'm happy to like give up that, uh, the comfort, comfort. Yeah, for, no. for that. And it's, I'm I mean, the same way. Like I'm, I'm never. To me, I'm never. I don't want to work at for. I don't want to work for someone. You know, like yeah, uh, it sucks. It sucks when someone's like, yeah. "Here's your schedule. Like this is what you have yeah, to do." Yeah. Like I worked at a yeah, coffee no, shop. Like, for me, yeah, and it was like that. But what were you saying? Yeah, like I never. Uh, my parents are more like entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurial too. Yeah. So like I've always been like, you know, I don't want to work for someone. Like I want to do my own thing. You know, like and. I, we're in the i feel like we're in the perfect country to do that like we're in the u.s like this is a perfect like you'd be stupid not to like do what you want to do yes free market capitalism it's like good things that everyone hates on um someone might get mad that we said that like but it's like it's true it's like it's one of the only countries that you can like just be like i'm not gonna work for the system i'm gonna like yeah. I'm gonna use social media. I'm gonna use all this other. I'm gonna use yeah. my platform, and I'm gonna build like a business. Free. Like all this stuff. A lot of this stuff's free. It's, yeah, like, it's completely free. Like I don't have to pay for ads or anything. Yeah, I don't have to do any of that stuff. I just post shit, and then someone yeah. likes it, and then eventually that you know that snowballed for me. Yeah. And now it's like I consistently have clients, and and the, I think the other thing, like my mom's from, my mom like is from Taiwan, but like my mom lives in China, like. In China, you can't do these things like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can't do these things in other countries. Like, you're more streamlined. Like, you got to yeah. do this. 
go to school, blah, blah, blah. Like, you don't have yeah. to do that, you know? Yeah, the culture is different. It's, uh, yeah. yeah, like my ex girlfriend is, is Japanese. And so yeah. obviously, I was studying Japanese for like four or five years. And yeah. uh, I don't, I don't even do that anymore because I, I found my like real passion. And one of the biggest things that I learned when studying Japanese, uh, and about the culture, because when you study the language, you learn about the culture too, right? Yeah. Um, was that like the path that you're supposed to follow is is so strict, and it's like the yeah, people, no. the people who don't follow the path, uh, they get ostracized. Like there's like the yeah. word uh, in Japanese is called murahachibu, which it's like your ostracization for like. That you're like the the black goat, you know, the black sheep. Yeah, the black sheep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, man, and like lots of other countries, it's like, it's not that you can't technically do it, but it's like when you do, there's so many like consequences, yeah. you know, un, yeah, un, no. unwritten rules. And like in the yeah. US, like we don't have that. You're just gonna it's look like, down upon it. Like you're just gonna look like people are, people are gonna look at you stupid, you know, like. Yeah, exactly. Which is yeah. the, the awesome thing about the. Um, the amazing United States of America. And I, I would assume anyone, yeah. any of my kids who listen to this, they, they would also do the same thing. Oh, okay. I have another question. Let me yeah. see. My phone turned off. I didn't want to write my questions down on a piece of paper. It's okay. What is your opinion about participation trophies? This is, this is a good one right here. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I think, man, I think, I think, man. It's rough. I know. I, I threw a hard one at you. I think definitely, I don't know, man. I think up in, I think they're fine to like high school. Okay. I think once you have high school, like who cares about participating, like whatever. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, like we'll do placements mm -hmm. and you're more competitive. But like growing up, like I, I think they might be good for like some, like, parents because like i think parents like a lot of parents like especially in wrestling like take it way too seriously One, yeah 100 percent. and like it it it's bad for the kid you know if like it is if the dad's so much like okay you need to get a medal here then or you know you, i'm gonna scream at you or i'm gonna even like yeah you know i'm gonna just punish you in some weird way yeah then, i'm like, gonna yeah i'm gonna take you to practice tomorrow we're gonna do a thousand sprints yeah. because you just lost yeah. and it's man you got no medal yeah yeah yeah, I see that a lot, especially in wrestling. Like the yeah. dads just like protect themselves, their insecurity on the kid, you know, trying to like do something they kind of do, which is pretty like funny to me because I'm just like, that's so dumb. Like, dude, I'm with. They you don't 100%. realize they don't realize what like damage they're doing to their kid. You know, like it's horrible. Dude. It's it's traumatizing. Yeah. They're traumatizing their yeah. children. Yeah, yeah. No, like like my dad was like my dad definitely like backed off during like um high school my dad was like pretty hard on me growing up not like super crazy but like for like for a little bit it definitely like affected me but he backed off a lot and he's like my dad's super great now but like definitely growing up it was hard like trying to like go to like navigate through that especially when you're a kid yeah i mean that's the thing it's just a sport at the end of the day it is so dude. the participation trophy like it's not a big deal like it's especially it, if yeah. you're, you're playing sports as like a little kid like who cares like I agree, no one, man. No one cares at all. Like, you know, no. like as long as they're having fun and like they're they're like making progression and like that's all that matters, you know. That right there is a, a good hot take. See, that I'm definitely gonna post like some of the clips from this on Instagram or whatever. Yeah, and that that's probably my favorite one already. Yeah, because I totally agree with you, dude. Like, oh my gosh, I I, I do wrestling privates, like I said, like that's my yeah, full time job. Oh my gosh. Stuff. Yeah. i've i've literally had to tell parents and the parents if they listen to they know who i'm talking about um yeah i've had to tell them like yo you need to chill out like you need to go sit over there and if you're gonna watch the practice you got to be quiet because i'm the coach right here right now yeah. i'm i don't want to i don't want to stress these kids out i want them to have fun learn some wrestling yeah, technique yeah, yeah. And, and do their thing and i've had parents literally make kids cry because they've been like yelling at them during like a private or during practice and the kids like you know, I've had one day where a kid comes in, it's just me, him, and his partner, um, and he's totally fine. And then the next day, it's me, him, and his partner, and his parents decide to stay and watch the practice. And now this kid yeah. is stressed out. He feels like, you know, yeah, he, he loses, and then he yeah. cries. And then and now it's like this whole big situation. It's like, yeah. man, there's so much more going on in that little moment than what we're just seeing right now. The, the parents probably, yeah. you know, yelling at the kid at home or, you know, yeah. undermining the kid because the kid's not the best wrestler and they're five years old and didn't win that five <laughs> years 
national title, which is fucking stupid. Like, who cares? Yeah. You know, a lot of parents don't know, man. Like, uh, especially yeah. like in wrestling, like the people who decide to pay money for me and eventually they'll pay money to have you teach their kids. It's going to be like they, they, what they think when they see like people like us teaching their kids are like, this person is going to be the ticket. Like this person is going to yeah. make my kid a winner. And it's like, it's not necessarily like if you wrestle and you've been successful, it's not necessarily just the techniques. It's how, being able to enjoy the sport, being able to choose to work hard. Yeah. Um, and the technique it really comes like last, like in the hierarchy yeah. of things that take you to be successful. Um, and that, I mean, I love coaching and parents don't, don't stop doing private <laughs> with me because I said this, I, yeah, I'm just yeah. saying like, um, there's so much more to success than what lots of people think and you can't buy yeah. success. Um, but which lots of people, parents think they can, and that's why they're like yelling at their kids because they've yeah. taken them to but 30 like, camps. Doing that, I feel like you're just holding your kid back. If anything, you're not put, trying to push them so hard. Like you are holding it back because you're putting all this extra pressure on, you know, a little kid, and like they don't know how to deal with that. They especially don't know how to deal with that. You know, when a when a grown adult's telling them, you know, you got to win. Like that's that's not fair to a kid. You know, like that's not to me. That's not right. Like. I agree. I agree. And uh, so I got two more questions. I'll let you go. You've been great. This, this has been a good, good conversation. So um, question number one, if your kid is uh, doing what, no matter what sport they do and um, they have to decide to go to college and they have, uh, they basically have all the options, division one through Juco. Yeah. And they, they say, dad, I want to go let's say they have full ride offers through all these divisions, division one, yeah. and they say, I want to go to the NAI. What do you say to them? Like, do you, are you like, okay. Or are you like, you should yeah, go division I'm saying one. sweet. Thank you. Because yes. to me, because yeah. to me, I'm just like, uh, okay. Like, do you want to, I think in NAI, you like, you have more balance, you know, like I can, I yeah. can actually go home Well, I live at home, but like, yeah, say yeah. I was out there, I can go home during the summer. I know yeah. you want kids. They get two weeks off in the summer and they get one week off for winter break. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's the only time they get to go home. And like, to me, that's not even like you're less like, school. I don't care how good the school is. Like you're not, this is not, and it's a full-time job. Like even more, yeah. if you want, you're spending more time. Like these programs, I feel like are even using kids. Like they, they oh, do not, they're, 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 they're using, using kids. kids. Absolutely. That's... Like they don't, they're not giving you enough scholarship to make up for how much hours you spend keeping no. you at the school over the summer and like during like these breaks like this is that and they don't even pay for your flights back they just no they expect you to pay for that kind of stuff like to me that's not that's not right i feel like any eye you get more freedom like i get uh mm -hmm. like all my teammates get to go back home you know like we get to take breaks you know mentally i feel like mentally like it's much more healthier any eye like i get to like enjoy a little bit more than like i feel like if i was the one you know Yep, I agree. I 100% agree. And that's why I love like the NIL deals. That's like a thing now that like, where athletes yeah. can actually make money now. Uh, because uh, it's it's bullshit that like at one point they were like, no, you can't make any money from sponsors or you can't make any money from like, oh, but they're I was, making. Yeah. Yeah. And now I was doing wrestling camps and I got told that I wasn't a, like, so I was doing wrestling camps in college and I was making a yeah. good amount of money. And I got told I'm literally not allowed to wear a Lindsey Wilson shirt or be yeah. affiliated to Lindsey Wilson at these wrestling camps because I'm making money using my skill. Um, and now you can, cause yeah. it's NAIL, like it's fine. But like, yeah, at the time, like I was in college, just like, you will be in trouble for making money. And it's like, motherfucker, I worked my ass off. I'm selling my own skill. What, what do you mean? I can't yeah, make money yeah. off this. You know, I'm selling like, my you kind of use your name right in the, in the camps or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I can't be like Lindsey Wilson like, college. Yeah. I have to be like Brandon Reed, three-time NAI national champ. Like at or at the time, it'd be like two-time NAI national champ, Brandon Reed. Yeah. Can't yeah, say yeah. Lindsey Wilson. If I put a poster up, I have to hide the Lindsey. Will I had to hide like really? the, the logo for Lindsey? Yeah, because you'd get in trouble. Like it, you could get in a big trouble that's, actually. That's, yeah, that's really stupid. I, I've never really got that. Yeah, but it's it's great now because with NIL, all that's gone. Like you can completely yeah, no, like yeah, monetize you yourself. Mean, like, yeah. Like I like doing the camps and stuff or like teaching kids over the summer. So like it makes yeah, it dude. way easier now. You know, I don't got to hide 
what school I go to. No. Or I have to think about these extra things that like don't even matter. Yeah, you can make your money. That and I, I'm definitely suggesting. Uh, I mean, you're already at home, but th- yeah. this summer I would really suggest that like you, you really try to monet like triple them, like how much you monetize yourself last year, and really reach yeah. out to kids and try to start doing privates and. Uh, yeah. cause now like one thing I wish I, I would have done that I didn't do in college is I wish I would have built a, start building a clientele then so that after college, I didn't have to build, build. you know, yeah, you you know? Build, yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, if you decide, do you want to do wrestling stuff on top yeah. of like, working at the sushi restaurant? Yeah, no, I, I, I would do that. I want to do so. Yeah, that's definitely smart. I mean, it's hard to like, I didn't really know too many people doing like, can't, that's why I actually reached out to you this summer. Cause I was like, yep. kind of like, I didn't know that many people that are doing that type of thing, you know, I feel yeah, like this dude. Is like very, not a lot of people are doing like the kind of space here and like, no, especially like, from the NAI. Yeah. 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 No, because, it, but, and then you got to deal with like, these people are just like, Oh, you're not D one. Like is, you know, it's yeah. a little like, okay, come on. Like, yeah. Yeah. Dude. 100%. I get, I've gotten that so much, so many times, but then <laughs> yeah. I, I have a kid from uh, Indiana. His name's Isaac. I love this kid. He's the best. He's probably the, you know, the best like technical kid that I have. He's definitely yeah. going to be division one wrestler. And I, yeah. we were talking about uh, Zane Rutherford and I was like, man, he's really good. Like, here's a little move. And he was like, uh, and I was like, man, I'm not as good as him, but here's like a movie does. And Isaac was like, but well, you're still really good. Like you're, you're still awesome. Like I'm happy you're my coach. And I was like, man, yeah. this is a little kid saying he doesn't care what division yeah. I'm from. He's happy. I mean, I'm a, he doesn't care that I'm a national champ. He's just happy. I'm yeah, a good yeah. coach. And it's like, man, yeah. oof, the D1 thing, it, it's – I've heard parents literally say, like, like, yo, like, I want my kids to go to Division One play camps. Like, there's a Perler camp, which is yeah. – like, it sucks. It's horrible. And yeah, I've it, been to Perler. It, it's it's I a went money to grab. Perler and it's literally, like, we, we just did the most basic – it was, like, a drilling camp with the most basic moves, and we yes. just drilled, like, the whole time. It's, it's stupid, and parents are throwing all their money into it because it's a Division One camp, you know? Yeah. Uh, no. Whereas, like, if you come to, like – I mean, I don't know how you coach, but for me, like, my value – like, the value that I try to provide is, like, man, you are learning lots of little details. You're drilling, but you're, yeah. you're also having fun. You're learning how to flow roll uh, and, and spar, yeah. and you're also – you're just learning so many small things because even myself, yeah. like, I, I study wrestling still. I'm continuously trying yeah. to get better. And I individualize my privates. I I hate the idea of teaching everyone the same thing because everyone's different. Um, and because yeah, different, I'm not a Division yeah. One wrestler, like um, my one of my training partners when I was in college, uh, and lots of people know this. I don't know if you do. Is Mason Paris? I always train with. Yeah. yeah. So like the winter break, um, this past winter break, I I was actually up in Ohio for two weeks just training with Mason. Um, and yeah. then I trained with him all summer too. Uh, and that was basically a consistent thing year by year. And this guy, like me and him, we're both technically pretty similar. Um, yeah, he's he's definitely better uh, for sure, yeah. like in his own way. Um, but it's like me and him both know, like if you ask, if we were in the same room and you asked either one of us a question, both of us could probably answer that question in our yeah. own different way. And for some people, my answer would be better. For some, his would be better. It has nothing to do with our division. We're both just good guys yeah. who really care about yeah. wrestling. But because he's a division one wrestler and he's a very good division one wrestler too yeah. at that. But even if he was just a, a mediocre division one wrestler, his his word means more, which both of us yeah. know that that's bullshit. Like it doesn't really matter yeah, if you're yeah. a division one or NAI guy. Like if you're good at wrestling and you understand wrestling, it, it's good. Some people just no, know how to apply also, it better. Like, yeah, that's why I also know about like coaching, you know, like just because you're this good in wrestling does not mean you're that you're gonna be that good in coaching. I've seen yeah. it like a million times. I've seen like, my high school coach, like, we were, like, he just won, like, his fifth state title or something wrestling. But, like, he, he never even wrestled in high school. Like, he doesn't – he if you, technically, I don't think he really knows, like, that much about wrestling yeah. <laughs> compared to, like, the normal Joe. But, like, he is so good at, like, just help, like, showing us the basics and just, like, as a team, just, like, help. Like, I don't think – I think I was talking to Jamil about it, and uh, he was, like, you know, Ruff doesn't know that much about he has assistants show a yeah. lot of the moves, but he yeah. is so good at he is good. He is like manages everything and he coaches everyone like and he's a leader. That's that's yeah. like the big thing. Like is being a coach is so much more than your technique. It's about how yeah. learning how to be a, be a leader. Um, you know, yeah. and how how to how to like um uh, what's the word? How to make leaders in your team. So it's like you, yeah. you can't just lead the team, like you have to be a leader get make other leaders yeah. and those leaders that's how you create a like a, a culture 
And being good yeah. at technique isn't enough to create a culture. You have to have yeah. uh, that personality. And it's the same thing with privates. You need to be yeah. a guy who really cares, like who like goes out of his yeah. way to learn. Um, you know, I, I know guys who do privates and all they, they only work with that kid at the time of the private for me. And this is something I suggest you do whenever you start to do it is yeah. you got to offer shit. Like you need a website. You also need to yeah. be, you need to do video review. If these kids have, pre, uh, if these kids have matches tournaments, you're telling the parents, Hey, what comes with my private, I'm going to watch your kids film. And then I'm going to take notes. And when he comes back to yeah. the next private, we're going to work on all these little spaces or as much as yeah. we can. And because now you're adding so, so much value, whereas lots of people yeah, are like, yeah, no, like they're just like, give me your money. They're, give me your money. Yeah. I'm good at wrestling. Give me your money. Your kid might not well, actually get be better. Like they'll, they'll show up the private and be like, all right, they don't even think before the private. They're just like, all right, I'm going to show out these two, three moves that I just think yeah. are cool. And yeah. I, I just, I'm like, we're just going to go. Over them. Yeah. It's but like, they don't actually like help them. Like I, no. in high school, in high school, I got someone uh, to actually really help me in wrestling. Like I had a guy do me privates. And I see went to my old high school too, but he was doing me privates, but he would like, we would go over things like, and it wasn't just like we went over things. Cause like I, I was already good at wrestling. It was more like mentality wise of just being more offensive. And just like when he would like tell me at practice, you know, he would tell me when I go to practice, you know, like who cares if I get scored on, you know, that doesn't matter who cares if you get taken down, you know, just like yep. we're going to keep trying to try new things, like try like, and that, when I went from here to here just because of mentality wise. Yeah. I, I never knew that, you know, like I didn't, I didn't get that to like, I was him. So. Yeah, no, I, I, I 100% agree with how your coach was. Um, and th that's how you have to be. Um, because yeah. if you just, like, like I said, I've been to camps too, where I'm like, why am I learning? Like, why, why am I learning the same sweep single? I learned my first day of wrestling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't actually, need to be no. here for that. Like, no. Or like I have kids who are who are bigger kids, like like heavyweights. I'm not gonna teach that kid a low single. I'm gonna teach yeah, him how to no, hand fight yeah, exactly. and do go behinds. Um, yeah. but like why would he go to a camp where he's this this two hundred pound kid or this two hundred and eighty five pound kid does not need to yeah. learn the same stuff as this one hundred and twenty pound kid. And it's um, even harder for like a uh like if the kid if the dude was a hundred twenty five pounder in college, like it's hard for someone to teach someone a heavyweight how to wrestle when they don't know like yeah it's not the same at all it's not the same yeah you can't like, you can't tell a heavyweight hey man i just want you to go out there and shoot 30 shots because yeah, no as a heavyweight what happens if you do that is you get smashed and you get gone yeah. behind and you rip your yeah. shoulders up and these are things that people who haven't wrestled heavyweight which is a man it's a complex yeah. weight class and people don't understand that is there are so many little things that you can, you know, you can fuck up, but it's also like, I can't, I mean, I can work with smaller guys and I do work with smaller guys. Like most of my guys yeah. are actually really small, but there's still a feel that I don't have that. Like, for example, you would have, you know, yeah. like, because you wrestled a lightweight class. Like there's, there's little things that each weight class, you know, has it's different. Um, and that's why, yeah. like, I, I prefer privates because, like, even if I'm working with a small guy, I can study. I can learn a little bit more to adjust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm working with a giant group of kids, it's very hard to give value to every single kid. Um, no, yeah. And I don't think parents understand that either. No, they don't. Like, um, you need to – honestly, I, if I was a parent, like, I'm not sending my kid – I might send him, like, one summer camp. But, like, yeah. besides that, I'm doing more privates and Same. Know, weekly, like – you know that yep. i feel like if you want to bank for your buck like that's what I something started. that will actually change someone yeah. wrestling and like improve them the most then that would be the route to go. yeah yeah 100 uh the thing i will say about privates is like i mean sorry what i'll say about camps that is good for me and you and anyone who decides to do camps is that you can stick with the same system for every camp so for me yeah the best thing is i do ankle picks at camps ankle pick my best yeah. move and i will show that ankle pick for six hours, like different yeah. variations of the ankle pick for six hours. And if you're coming to my camp, you should know what to expect. I have one kid who went to all 20 of my camps that I did this past summer. He went to every single camp. Really? That's yeah, crazy. He, he's crazy. He drove everywhere. It was wild. But it's like um, at camps, you since you can't try to like teach your 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 uh, specialty, I guess. Um, yeah. As much as you can. Uh, but yeah, camps and private they they're totally different. I prefer privates. I like camps because it's a good way to earn some money. And uh, yeah, no, you, you make a lot more money at one time. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, oh, last question. So, yeah. So last question. Um, if, 
okay, what is one piece of advice you would give to someone who starts wrestling when they're young? Like, if you could say, here's the yeah. biggest piece of advice, like one very short, something I could be like, here, listen to this. Like, uh, I would just say, you know, uh, have fun with it. That's pretty much like, just, you know, have fun with it. It's just a sport, you know, it doesn't, it's not really, it's not life or death, you know, like this it doesn't, at the end of the day, you know, who cares, you know, like just have fun and just try new things at practice. Who cares if you lose at practice? Like no one cares, you know, yeah, that's basically exactly. it. Heck yeah. So have fun with it. No one cares yeah. if you lose. I 100% agree. And uh, I add on to that and say, you're more than this, you know, like that's, yeah. you know, that's both those. I mean, it seems like me and you have a pretty similar mindset, to be honest. Yeah. So yeah, you're more than this. Work your ass off. Do as much as you can. But at the end of the day, just have fun. Yeah. All right, dude. Thank you so much yeah. for letting me Thank talk you, to you. It was Thanks super cool. Me. I'll post this sweet. soon and I'll edit some clips or whatever. And right, uh sweet. you know, you're like the first, you're the first guest. I actually was supposed oh, to have sweet. some other people on, but they stuff happened. But you so really? you're the first. But uh, right, if you could send me a picture, like send me a picture so I can like uh, have like a thumbnail for you. I I got you, I got you. All right, dude. Thanks All again, right. man. All right, thank you, man. Yep, see ya.